Okay, in this example we're going to look at a lottery where we're picking um, five numbers from 1 to 35 uh, with no repetition and it costs a dollar for a ticket. If you get all five numbers you win the jackpot and with a lot of lotteries these jackpots vary so we're going to estimate it at $50,000. If we pick four we win $500 and if three of ours that we picked uh, match we win $5. $5. Otherwise, um, if we pick 2, 1, or 0, we win nothing. We lost our dollar um, that we initially paid. And so for each of these payouts, we still lose that dollar because we have to pay for the dollar, uh, that ticket up front, and you only get to redeem that ticket for the uh, winnings if one of these three events uh, are matched up. So what is the expected winnings uh, of a single ticket? And so remember when we talk about expected values, uh, the expected value is simply the sum of the product of outcomes with their probabilities. And so that means that I need to figure out my winning is my outcome, the winning value. I need to find out the probabilities for each of those winnings. Since it's costing me a dollar, I have to kind of factor that into some at some point. So either we can do it at the front or we can do it at the end. Uh, I, I typically like to approach these problems by factoring the, the cost right up in the front. Otherwise, I've got a chance of forgetting about it. So I'm going to be listing out what my net gains are. So those are the outcomes of buying the ticket. Uh, I could win. We estimated fifty thousand um, dollars, but it, you know we still got to consider the cost of the ticket. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take that dollar off anyways. Although that fifty thousand was an approximation. Um, so if, if we match all five, you know our theoretical gain is fifty. Uh, 49,999 and so I'm gonna have to figure out what that probability is so I'll get to that in a moment the other net gains so we look at uh, I win five hundred dollars well it still cost me a dollar for that ticket so it's actually winning four hundred and ninety nine I win five dollars well it still cost me a dollar so I only won four dollars and then if I lost it's not that nothing happened. Well, I lost my dollar. So my net gain there is a negative one. So looking at the probabilities, this is where it's going to uh, require a little bit more work on our part. The probability of winning is that I have to choose all five winning numbers out of the 35 possible. So the only way for me to win is that all five that I choose match the five selected. So I'm going to calculate this probability and then we'll do it for each one of these. Um, this one's not too bad because it's a combination problem. Out of the five winning, I'm choosing five of them. So this is five choose five. How many different ways could we choose five out of the 35 numbers? So remember we're doing the NCR here, so I've got 35 numbers to choose from and I want 5 of them. This ratio gives me my probability of winning that jackpot. So 5 choose 5, there's actually only one way that happens and you should verify it with the formula. And if you're using, uh, not a calculator that can do this for you, but if you're doing it by hand, this is 35 factorial over uh, 5 factorial times 35 minus 5 factorial. So we have that the probability of winning 49,999 is 1 over this number. And so if you simplify this, we've got uh, 35 times 34 times 33 
times 32 times 31 times 30 factorial. Simplify it down to the largest factorial in the denominator. Uh, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times that 30 factorial. We know those 30 factorials are going to cancel each other out. And now I just have to reduce this down. Um, so we can divide 5 into 35. 4 can go into uh, 32 here. 8 times. 3 can go into 33, 11 times. And 2 can go into 34, 17 times. So pulling out a calculator, I have the probability that we win at 49,999 is 1 over this product, 7 times 17 times 11 times 8 times 31. Which is, when you put it in your, into a calculator and multiply that out, we get 324,632. So I got one taken care of. I've got to find the probability of these other three. And, and this is where it's going to get a little bit more challenging to get those probabilities. So we're going to look at the 499 winning. So the outcome is I, I win 499. What this means is I match four of the five that are chosen. And so I want to look at how many ways that's possible out of the 35 um, matching 5 out of the 35, which I already know the denominator for. So the probability that I win 499 is going to be the number of ways that this can happen. I'm going to match four of them, but my fifth one doesn't match. Out of the uh, possible ways that I can choose 5 out of 35, and we already again saw that to be 324,632. So that part's done. What we got to do is figure out the numerator. So thinking about it is, well, I match the four, and then that last one, there's still a, a number of ways that I can choose a ball that doesn't match one of those five. So five have been chosen means that 30 of them have not. So 30, I need to choose one of them not to match. And so I'm using the fundamental counting principle here, is that um, I've got one way for the one not to match out of the 30. And then I have to figure out, well, how many ways can I match five of those? And again, that's a, a combination problem. So I have five, choose four of them. And so we need to simplify this. Uh, the nice thing about the 30 choose one is that you're going to see that the answer is just going to be 30. Uh, 5 choose 4, I have 5 factorial over 4 factorial times 5 minus 4 factorial by the definition. That's 1 factorial which is 1 and here I have 5 times 4 factorial. So the 4 factorials are going to cancel so I have 5 times 30 actually on top and again the denominator is still the 324,632. So my probability of winning is 5 times 30, so 150, over 324,632. Now I need to find the probability that we win um, a net gain of $4. So that means I, I match three of these. So again, we're going to have to use that uh, fundamental counting principle, just like we did for matching four. So in this situation, I have that I win a total of $4, and that means I match three of the five. So that probability of winning, and again, that's for our net gain, is the same counting principle here. First, I have to figure out, well, how many ways can I match three of the five? So that's five choose three. And then two of them must not have matched those five. So I have to figure out how many ways can I choose three, sorry, two from the 30. And denominator is still five choose, uh, uh, choosing five out of 35. And we saw that again was 324,632. So I need to simplify these two uh, combinations. 
So I went ahead and just kind of wrote the definition for both of those and realized that we just need to reduce this down to a, a lower form. And so that first term here, I have 5 times 4 times 3 factorial all over 3 factorial times, that's 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1. The second term, I have 30 factorial, and there's a 28 on the bottom, so I'm going to take this as 39 times 29 times 28 factorial, all over 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1. And not to forget it, still have the same denominator, 324,632. I realize I wrote a 6 there. So simplifying, just going to go through this quickly. The 3 factorials cancel, the 2 cancels, that gives me a 2 here. The uh, 28 factorials cancel, 2 goes into 30 15 times. That's going to leave me in my numerator 5 times 2 times 15 times 29. And so when you take that product, you get 4,350. So I have my probability of winning a net gain of the 49,999, 499, 4, and now we're left with um, the probability that we just lose the dollar by playing the lottery. Now that one can happen in a few different ways. Either I, I, I only match 2, I only match 1, or I match 0. And that seems, just based on the other work, to be a little bit cumbersome. And so one of the things that we can remember is that when I add up all the probabilities, I have to get one as an answer. So the probability that I, I win or I have that net gain of a negative one dollar is one minus the probability that we had the uh, 49,999. So I'm adding these all up together, the 499 and the four dollars. And that seems it's going to be much easier to calculate. So I'm going to take the uh, 1 minus each of those probabilities. So I had 1 over 3, 2, 4, 6, 3, 2. The probability of 499 was 150 over that number. And the probability that we had 4, we just found was 4,350 over 324632. So I'll be right back after I simplify it. This gives me a result of 320,131 over 324,632. And that's just uh, one minus the sum of these three fractions, so you can verify that. So on to my result, my expected value so my expected net gain here is going to be each outcome weighted by their probability and then summing up the total. So to save time, I just kind of wrote out that result. And let me give yourself a little more room here. The expected value was, again, each outcome, so winning the 49,999 jackpot times its probability, the 499 times its probability, the 4 times its probability, and the probability of just um, that negative one outcome, um, sorry, the probability times that negative one outcome of losing. And so if I simplify this in my calculator, I get that the expected net gain of playing the lottery, so again, I'm paying the dollar to play the lottery, is going to be the, the sum of those products. Now, if you want it in a fraction form, it's negative 177882 over 324632 and that rounds to roughly so to two places here because we're dealing with money is that I'm losing on average 55 cents per lottery ticket that I purchased 